hello again. It's been a while, but uh, I thought I would let you know it just arrived in the mail. It's from Nikon. It's the latest lens in their PC um, tilt shift series. It's the 19 millimeter. like a soft case. At first appearance, uh, let's just get this thing off quickly. First thing I notice is this very robust lens cover, the front lens cap. Given how much that glass protrudes, that's uh, very, very good. I like it. It is rather heavy. Uh, as I look around, uh, I'm seeing new things. Uh, here's a new feature here. This is a lock associated with the, the shift mechanism. So I guess you can, here's your turning knock, turning knob. I guess that unlocks the tilt mechanism so that then you can turn this knob. The knob's got great friction. It also has a center indentation to know that you're centered. And then once in position, you can lock it. That's great. But um, once centered again, you can move that tab over and lock it. That's great because it's tilting in my experience it's quite a rare occurrence, I don't do it very often, and so knowing that that can't be bumped out of position is very reassuring. That uh, was not the case with the 24 PCE tilt, that tilt shift lens. Alright, so uh, the next thing I notice is this very, very large knob here, um, and no opposing locking mechanism, either a locking tab or a locking knob. It appears that it's just uh, shift by one knob only. The friction seems greater than the old lens and there's no center and there's no center indentation to know that you're zeroed out. I guess that only makes sense because um, who wants to center the shift position when shooting? You might as well have uh, a lower priced wide angle lens for that purpose so I guess it just travels right past center because Nobody really wants to use a tilt-shift lens when everything's zeroed out. It doesn't make sense. So uh, this is probably a good time to bring out the, um, the 24 tilt-shift that I've been using in the past. Uh, when, once, the, um, once the lens hood is off, you'll notice that the 24 PC is actually a smaller lens than the 19. Uh, the shift knob is uh, smaller than the, the new 19mm knob, but it also happens to have the opposing locking knob there that this one doesn't have. So I unlock it and I do my shift and uh, I notice that there's a lot more um, it's a lot less friction, uh, making the 24PC more reliant on this knob for locking it in position, whereas this one has greater friction, so eliminating the need for that knob. Uh, the next thing I notice is that this has a, a tab here for rotating the uh, lens from vertical to horizontal when doing the shifts, and this one has the same mechanism here. 
I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, but there's an extra one here that doesn't appear anywhere on a 24 PC. So uh, this, this um, rotation is wonderful because it now means that your tilt is in a different plane to your shift, or it can be independent. Uh, whereas on this lens, if your tilt plane was um, in an inconvenient, inconvenient position compared to the shift, you'd have to ha actually have the lens sent in and have it, mod have it modified to rotate the shift mechanism 90 degrees. Um, that's now been cured by the new 19 because uh, the shift and the tilt are independently um, able to be moved independent of each other. Uh, another thing I notice absent on the 19 is this uh, knob here called the depth of field preview knob. Uh, it is uh, the way one would look through the viewfinder and push this knob and it would shut down the um, aperture electronically to, um, to see just exactly what your depth of field preview is. And uh, that, of course, is associated with this uh, aperture ring here, where you could uh, leave it on L for fully electronic uh, aperture, or you could switch it over to uh, manual um, settings, although it's still an electronic shutter, that you have manual settings uh, so that you could control the, ap the aperture independently on this ring. Uh, that is all missing on this lens. There's no L indentation and there's no aperture ring and there is no button for depth of field preview. I'm presuming that that is done with the electronic depth of field preview button on the body now. Uh, so let's see, the last thing I probably want to mention is uh, that the 19 and the 24 focus fairly close, like around six inches, but um, the 24 just beats out the 19 just by uh, probably half an inch or so on half, half close, you can focus with those. So um, let's now uh, see what the 19 is like on the body. So the lights changed a little bit, uh, so I, excuse me for the change of color. I had to turn the lights inside the house on in order to see some of the details on the lens. So what we have here is uh, a 14, 24 millimeter zoom lens that is a standard for a lot of people as they consider themselves uh, commercial photographers but uh, the huge limitation to this lens is once you tilt it. If you tilt it down uh, for instance they're photographing a table sitting in a room the walls, the far wall at the ceiling height will be far wider than the same wall at its uh, at the floor level. Uh, and likewise, if you're photographing a tall building, uh, if you're trying to avoid having the whole parking lot take up the whole half the picture, you have to tilt the camera up, where now you will have the ground floor very very wide, and the upper floor very very narrow. Of course, this can all be fixed in uh, Photoshop with um, the, distort, the, the transform uh, capabilities. The problem is that uh, when you stretch out the narrow part to um, make all the vertical lines vertical again, you also have a corresponding convergence of the lower part of the picture if you're shooting upwards and the upper part of the picture if you're shooting downwards. And after cropping out that uh, unusual finished uh, image, you end up pretty close to what the 24 uh, tilt shift can do. So, so even though technically it's a very, very wide angle lens, uh, unless you are keeping your camera very, very close to horizontal, uh, you're not going to get um, a very wide angle shot after correcting for distortion. So uh, that's why um, people like me who shoot architecture where the vertical lines need to be level, I mean sorry, parallel and uh, vertical, that's why um, we purchase 
lenses like this 19 millimeter which just came out because it is very, very wide angle and at the same time allows you to keep your camera in the vertical position and uh, then just simply raise up the building raise your, by shifting your lens up you can now climb up the side of the building keeping all the vertical lines parallel and yet leaving the parking lot behind uh, certainly keeping it down at the bottom and now allowing you to see all the way to the top of the building while keeping all your vertical lines straight and uh, that means that you've got sharp you've got the image equally sharp from bottom to top as opposed to the wide angle the 14 millimeter lens which would have had to stretch pixels where the building had narrowed and compressed the pixels where the building was wide and um, and in the end you don't have even sharpness all the way across your picture so so that's uh, the main reason I use tilt shift lenses now if I was photographing let's say a banquet hall and um, I was photographing all the tables from the front of the hall to the uh, far back of the hall I wanted it all in focus um, I have this ability to turn the, um, the, the, the tilting mechanism independent of the, uh, the shift mechanism. So now I can shift up and down while in the horizontal format as well as unlocking and now adjusting the tilt mechanism to increase my depth of field. So this is great for interior work. I, if I want the knife, knife and fork on the plate, one foot in front of this lens to be in focus, as well as all the way to the back um, crown molding on the back of the uh, hall that I'm photographing, and have all the chandeliers and all the chairs and everything in focus all together at the same time, this ability to shift the focal plane into an angle from there to something like that allows me to increase my effective depth of field by shifting the focal plane. This is a wonderful adaptation and uh, it was common in the old cameras, you know, the ones that you put your head underneath the dark cloth and look through a ground glass on a, on a view camera. Well, this is basically doing the same thing. You're able to tilt the focal plane by adjusting the front, um, by the lens mount being tilted forward. So. Since we're on the subject of uh, depth of field and focusing, let's talk about this. This is a um, manual focus lens. There's no autofocus functionality. And, and the confirmation um, light that comes on when you're in focus normally doesn't work because you're outside of the normal parameters of optics. So the best way to deal with um, getting maximum sharpness is to turn the live view function of your um, camera on and look through a, a loop and um, and then zoom in on your live view mode and then just kind of focus on your very closest uh, object that you want to focus and then you go check out the far distant object and then kind of fiddle until it's all balanced doing this of course with the lens wide open and um, and modern you know, the, the more modern cameras you can adjust your aperture while still in live view so while you're in live view, open up your aperture wide open, get your, get your depth of field just right by just playing with the, um, the tilt backwards and forwards. And it doesn't take much effort, much movement. Take just very, very small movements until you can get just the entire scene almost in focus, just wide open. And then you can stop down a couple of stops and, uh, and finish your exposure uh, once having established the maximum depth of field in, in live view mode. Uh, another thing to ensure maximum sharpness is to um, make sure you use a cable release. Uh, a good cable release will uh, ensure the camera doesn't move. And also, if you're doing something like, uh, I'm just going to put this back to normal again. If you're doing something like a stitch where you're shooting very tall scene where you want to 
get, let's say, something in the parking lot, like a garden or whatever, on the lower end, uh, in the shop, but then you can't get that flower arrangement and the top of the building in focus, so in the view all at once, then you could do something like shift it down to get the lower part and then shift it up to get the top end of the shot and then combine the two in Photoshop. I call, it's called stitching, stitching your two pictures together. So this extends the range of uh, what your lens can do in terms of field of view. Now, most people can say, well, I can just do that with my normal lens. Well, actually, with the parallax factor and the distortions associated with changing angles, it's very, very complicated uh, to, and um, not without distortion or lack of uh, loss of quality to um, simply change the angle of view of a normal lens. So because you're not changing your angle of view, you're just simply selecting a different portion of the image by going to the lower portion of the image then coming up, not moving anything, not tilting the camera anyway and just coming up and shooting an upper portion of the image. You're able to comfortably stitch them together without having to do any transformations or um, uh, manipulation of pixels uh, on your on your finished image, so it gives you the effect of um, instead of only seeing this much, you're see, able to see maybe this much of your image. Um, so it makes it effectively a wider angle lens than a 19. And um, <clears throat> it's, this is probably a good time to mention that the um, image circle coming through the average lens is a little bit bigger than um, the, the sensor itself and that's why it tends to vignette toward the outside edges is because you're reaching the outside edge of your image circle. But on a lens like this, this is not a 19 millimeter lens. It's actually a very, very, very wide angle lens that is once, um, once that image reaches the sensor, it's the equivalent of a 19 millimeter because uh, it has a large image circle at the back of the camera and all you're doing basically is shifting up and down or uh, or side to side through that image circle selecting or cropping just a portion of the image so this is a very very wide angle lens and um, and uh, I just don't want anyone to think that that um, somehow it magically moves the picture it's not moving the picture it's moving the sensor across the image circles uh, it's probably a better way of describing it so um, that probably covers uh, the main points about focusing. In terms of image quality, because um, unlike the 24mm, uh, which has a 24mm has a lens hood and, uh, and a filter, so this one can actually take a polarizing filter if you choose to. Um, I don't recommend polarizing filters with very wide angle lenses, but uh, it can take filters, but uh, this lens obviously can't take filters, so it's unprotected. And, uh, and it can't take a lens, a lens shade, so, <coughs> so it's got the advantage of having fluoride coating and nanocrystal coating and other optical coatings to reduce ghosting and flare. But ultimately, if you do in fact end up with a, um, a hard light source in your scene, just go ahead and block it, you know, if it's slightly out of the view of the camera, so that you, you can avoid flare. And even if it's in the scene, uh, there are tricks you can do, like for instance, uh, photograph the picture with the light source in the scene and then take a second picture with the light source turned off and removed and you Photoshop it in later, uh, Photoshop the two together later so that you can have a scene where they have the effect of a bright light backlighting the scene but not actually have the light in the shot. So there you have it. Those are a few of my initial observations as I've opened up this lens for the first time. Um, Perhaps uh, another video will show and demonstrate uh, the actual images that I have derived from this new lens. I'm looking forward to it and look forward to sharing it with you soon.